Hey, I'm Juan. Thank you for joining me. Well, Senseonics got their approval. So what am I going to do next? Was I right? Was I wrong? I was expecting a bigger spike after the news of the approval, but we got a over 20% fall pre-market after they approved FDA. I'm going to give you some reasons why I think it dropped so much. My plans for Senseonics, I've been in it since under $2. So what am I going to do next? You're going to want to watch this video. So Senseonics announced they received FDA approval. The world's first and only long-term implantable CGM system now offers patients exceptional accuracy for six months. So that was the headline, a very strong headline. And I truly anticipated a much higher spike. But I'm going to give you a couple of reasons of why I think it didn't spike the way I anticipated that it was going to spike. But I'm still holding on. I'm still holding Senseonics. I've been in it for a while. One, if you've been day trading, investing long enough, then usually every seven years, you sometimes see different cycles. We've been in one of the most bullish cycles that we've seen in history, but we have much higher inflation. They just, the CPI announcement came out, the inflation was 7.5. So what does that mean? Something has to be done to control that inflation. You're going to have to have more interest spikes. You're going to have to take care of the shipping situation, the supply and demand. All these things have to be corrected in order to take care of that inflation. When you increase interest, it takes an effect on a lot of growth stocks, on a lot of stocks that anticipate growth and higher revenue and higher net profits down the road as opposed to value stocks. And even if you look at my portfolio, you see that the value stocks are up and the growth stocks are down. This is just one of those cycles. This is not a bad company though. Let's look at the news and try to dissect other than the overall market feel, why else wasn't there a major spike? Everson's system was found to have a mean absolute relative difference of 8.5%, which is excellent. It's very accurate. It's very competitive with Dexacom, with Abbott, with Medtronix. And this is what you want to see. You want to see high accuracy and it will read up to six months. That's There's nothing in the market like this. So this is still positive. This is great news. And I, I think this right here is what kind of scared away investors or people holding shares. They expect to return revenue of $4 million for Q4 and $13.7 million for the past year. So here, and then on another announcement, the company expects full year of 2022 to be global net revenue of 14 to 18 million. The company expects the majority of its expenses for 2022 to be in research and development. And this is one of the things I spoke about. I spoke about how high their research and development is, how much they spend on selling general and admin costs, and that they have to take control of that. But it's not going to be for a while because now they're working on 365. We have to see an increase in revenue. We want to see that people are buying this six months CGM device, and that's going to help the 365. 365 is going to be big. So that's why if you were, if you just swung trade this, maybe you didn't do as well. If you've been in it since under $2, then you're in a great position. And I would say just hold it for the next year. It's down pre-market. It went down as over 20 something percent, but it still has the potential of turning around. And as more people come into the market, Still getting a little bit of a spike. And let's look at the last time they got 4 million in a quarter was September of 2019. I think June and September, they got 4.6, 4.3. Maybe people were expecting higher numbers. December, when their quarterly report comes out, if they did get 4 million, that's great. That's a sign that they're back on an uptrend. They were down. Look how, how much revenue they made in 2020, 2000 in September, barely, barely a million. Because of COVID, everything was shut down and this is a, a procedure that has to be done at the doctor's office. If we look at the annual, they anticipated 14 to $18 million in global net revenue for 2022. I think that's where the disappointment was because in 2018, they got 18.9 million globally without the new device. And in 2019, 21 million without the new device. I don't know if they gave lower numbers 
so that if higher numbers come out, it'll cause a higher spike. But saying that they anticipate for 2022, 14 to 18 million dollars in global net revenue definitely doesn't sound as encouraging just because they they got that much in 2018 and they got more than that in 2019 they're going to start focusing on the 365 that's going to take a while because you have to get a a group follow them do a blind study you can't really have results until a year when you have that group because it's a 365 day device when it dropped down here to 211 and 240 there were major buyers and this wasn't just regular regular buyers there was institutional buyers just a ton of volume came in fda approval got it and i think because they didn't see a big spike i think a lot of people sold their position and it caused this this downtrend so we see here pre-market from the spike here went down over 20 percent starting to reverse a little bit but definitely not what i wanted to see i really wanted to see here news announcement and then i anticipated this white line here resistance is 419 i thought it was going to spike up here and i was going to be happy selling some here and then hoping it dropped again and buying in long term but those are my reasons we're not in a super bullish market like before we just had the cpi report come out and say it was 7.5 so something has to be done interest has to go up along with their announcement of fda approval they announced their anticipation of global revenue for 2022 which was 14 to 18 million which wasn't even higher than eight 2018 and 2019 and they have a new device. I understand their net profit is probably still going to be negative because they're going to reinvest all their revenue back into the 365. I think it's a positive thing. I'm still happy. I'm happy they got the FDA approval. That was a big step. I'm just holding. I'm going to keep holding and I'm going to keep following Sensionics. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.